Hi, I'm Karen Roby with Danny Palmer for ZDNet. We're talking today about IoT devices that are most commonly targeted by hackers. And uh, many people, I think, uh, believe, Danny, that smartphones and these type of devices aren't of interest to hackers, but they actually can provide a, a great gateway for them. They do. Um, lots of people have taken it upon themselves to install uh, connected devices into their homes, like you know, cameras, uh, routers, uh, smarts, all, all manner of smart devices. But you know, uh, these do provide benefits to people, otherwise you know, they wouldn't be installing them. But if incorrectly set up or used in the wrong way, they can make people more vulnerable to attackers. A, a recent uh, research survey by a security company, uh, Sam Seamless Networks, found that when it comes to Internet of Things based cyber attacks, um, IP security cameras or internet connected security cameras made up um, almost half of the most commonly attacked uh, connected devices, which is um, considering uh, the amount of them out there in the world, it is, is quite a lot. I mean, there's a, qu a quite simple reason, I suppose, for this being the case in that uh, with these devices, I mean, people install them to either, you know, keep an eye out on you know, inside their homes or offices or outside it or keep an eye on pets, that sort of thing. Um, you can buy these really cheaply, but buying a cheap device isn't necessarily the best way to go. It's, it's quite, there's been plenty of cases over the last few years where security companies have found quite severe vulnerabilities in these uh, devices and um, that it can, which can allow uh, attackers into into the network uh, remotely um, in the sort of, I guess, best in inverted commas uh, scenario. All they'll be able to do is kind of invade your privacy and uh, you know look look or listen to what's going on uh, in in view of the camera. But there's also potential for that the attack to be much worse because if that camera is set up uh, on a network with every other device in your in your home or office there's potential there for lateral movement across the network and it could create a really quite simple to use uh, for attackers who have the know-how uh, backdoor into a network which could be used to get to you know, computers, which then can be used to get to documents, files, things like that. And um, that's not something that's any good for anyone. Yeah, absolutely not. It's it's really scary, Danny, with this many of these IoT devices uh, as they have out there, and there'll be so many more to come um, in everyone's houses. So, what is some of the you know things that we can pass on to people uh, to keep in mind and ways that they can uh, keep themselves safe? I guess the first thing would be um, if you if you want one of these devices. Uh, you're better buying them from a, a well-known uh, vendor of uh, technological products. I mean, there is a, here in the UK, there's a scheme where um, organizations can uh, sign up to say, look, we are managing our IoT devices securely, and some quite big names have signed up to it. But I guess one of the reasons this is kind of happening is because when people buy these things, they're looking for the cheapest options available. And in a lot of cases, you look on high-profile pro uh, retailers, you'll see very cheap uh, cameras up for sale. And in some cases, there, there's a reason why these why these devices devices are cheap. Uh, moving away from uh, cameras, uh, there was a big breach uh, last year with a company that sold uh, internet-connected children's toys, and it was found they had massive lots of uh, vulnerabilities that you know the attackers could access stuff stored on. Easily, lots of users use the insecure passwords, including a lot of them using a three-character password that was used in the YouTube demo video. Basically, this company it was found had you no know, was insecure, and but the, the products were still being sold, and the company didn't really acknowledge there was a problem. It got to the point where these toys are being sold for you know as little as ten dollars, maybe less. And um, if an internet-connected device is that cheap. You should probably be asking yourself uh, some questions because there probably is a reason. There is another way around this, though. Um, if you are uh, buying and installing IoT devices uh, onto your home or you know, corporate network, one good idea is to make sure they're on a separate network to you know, any other sort of uh, important devices, be it you know, your computers, uh, your, your phones, anything. Because in the case that an attacker does manage to get through and breach 
uh, that device, um, it's the, they'll be stuck on a network which is separate to where all the uh, crown jewel and important information is, which is uh, going to stop them in their tracks a little bit. There's also, it's also a good idea, um, if possible, because uh, some IoT devices don't allow this because uh, they have sort of built-in passwords. But you know, if you can change a password, do do so and change it to something that's you know, difficult to guess or, and, uh, or, or hack because you know, that's, that's a, just another small step that you know, prevents attackers from really doing a lot of damage. If they can't break your device that way, um, you know, by brute force with simple words and simple passwords, uh, they're not going to be able to get in. And I guess finally, um, if the device manufacturer does regularly provide patches and updates to the device, make sure they're being applied. I mean, in many cases, these patches will happen automatically, but it's a good idea to you know, take, to, take to the device and check it out and make sure it's all up to date uh, uh, fairly regularly, just so you can make sure you, your device is as secure as possible so you can keep using it uh, and you know, benefit from the, uh, from, from the uh, thing you're using it for, be it you know, smart TV, IP camera or whatever else because you're obviously installing this to bring you a benefit in your home or office and the best way to do that is to make sure it's secure when doing so. Yeah some great advice there Danny and and as you mentioned you know everything from kids toys to you know the cameras that we have around our house uh, to keep us safe and obviously safety privacy all of that is top of mind but when it comes to these IoT devices, there's more and more of them on the market now and the amount of data that they're producing, there's just a lot of uncertainties here. Yeah, there is. And as you say, these devices are you know, becoming more and more common in, in, in the world. I mean, think about sort of five, uh, five years ago, I mean, people weren't really using that many connected devices. I think you know, people spoke about smart TVs, uh, but I, 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 don't, I don't really recall, you know, at least in the circle, circles I moved in at the time, a lot of uh, things going on in that way. Well, move forward now, there's home assistants, you know, uh, cameras, loads of things and you know, sensors and the, the, the technology is moving very, very quickly and um, hackers and bad actors will always try and find ways to, 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 to find ways to break into these. I mean, think about smartphones. So the iPhone first was first announced 12 years ago that's changed the way we do computing. It's changed the way attackers can break into networks and IoT devices is following the same, the same trend. They're providing uh, us with more opportunities and uh, useful benefits, but yes, we're still playing catch up on the security of these as well as they can provide attackers with additional ways in if you're not careful. Yeah, it's definitely, this isn't going anywhere, definitely a topic, Danny, that we're going to be talking about uh, a lot. So we thank you for your insight on this. And for Danny's full article, make sure you check out ZDNet.